Jump seating is one of the greatest privileges afforded to us as pilots. It allows us to occupy the flight deck jump seat on our own airline and dozens of other carriers when a cabin seat isn't available in the back. And this can be a lifesaver when flights are oversold and you can't get a seat when you're trying to get somewhere or if you're trying to commute to work. Cockpit jump seats are primarily installed by government regulations so that the FAA, NTSB, and airline management can observe and check flight crews. But when the seats aren't being used for these purposes, they can be occupied by pilots, dispatchers, or sometimes even air traffic controllers. As a jump seater, you can occupy the flight deck jump seat or a cabin seat if one is available. Either way, you're considered a crew member by federal regulations, so you must follow regs like no alcohol consumption, prescription medication policies, and maintain a sterile cockpit. When you're a jump seater, your seat and your ability to fly on the airplane is at the sole discretion of the captain for that flight. We have reciprocal jump seat agreements with most airlines around the country, and that goes for both passenger and cargo carriers. This privilege is a huge resource for pilots that are commuting from all over, and you can also use jump seating for personal travel, and that's perfectly okay too. Just like non-rev standby travel, there's a list of priorities within the cockpit jump seat list to see which pilots are in line first for the cockpit jump seats when there are other pilots listed for the same flight. And normally pilots flying on their own metal get first priority, which means that when I'm flying on board an Envoy aircraft, I get priority over every other pilot, including those from American Airlines. Generally speaking, mainline carriers that have regional connection partners have their pilots second in line, followed by pilots from all other airlines. One of the most unique opportunities that we have is the ability to jump seat on cargo airlines that you would never be able to fly on as a normal passenger. On many larger cargo carriers that are multiple jump seats and sometimes even a small cabin in between the cargo section and the flight deck of the aircraft. If you can find a flight time that works for you and a route structure that works, it's sort of like having your golden ticket to a confirmed seat because all of those jump seats are rarely filled on cargo flights. I've been able to travel to some pretty cool places on cargo airlines, including Tokyo, Japan, Santiago, Chile, and Anchorage, Alaska. Jump seating really is a privilege and we're expected to treat it with a high level of professionalism. Business, business casual, or airline uniform is the proper dress code for jump seating. So no jeans, no beards, and definitely no t-shirts. Regardless of whether you have a seat in the cabin or flight deck, when you're traveling as a jump seater and not just a non-rev passenger, you're expected to check with the flight crew as you board the airplane. That means introducing yourself to the flight attendants and then heading up to the flight tech to discuss with the captain. You jump seating on their flight, you ask for permission, and then they'll ask for your pilot certificate, your company ID, and your medical certificate before you start to fly. Now keep in mind, this is probably during boarding, so the best thing that you can do is get your baggage out of the way or wait till the end of boarding before heading up to the flight deck, making sure not to interrupt them while they're doing their pre-flight checklists.
While flying in a jump seat like this may not always be comfortable, it's one of the most valued privileges that we have as pilots. And it's so important, in fact, that there's an entire committee at the union dedicated just to managing our jump seat policies and the reciprocal agreements that we have with other airlines.